Uh, good day, everyone. So today we're going to talk about and continue the series of harmonic motion and vibrations. So today we're going to basically going to talk about the um, we're going to derive the equation for a system that's hanging f that's hanging from a spring mass hanging from a spring. But before that, I want to before I dig into that, I want to talk about briefly about the um, a general inquiry that I got from a previous video. So basically, when deriving the equations of motion, um, we use Newton's second law. Of motion. And what we do is, first of all, for a rigid body in translation, <clears throat> what we do is we take the sum of forces so basically sigma forces equals ma and what we do for a rigid body in rotation so a basic simple example of this is a pendulum, right? A pendulum hangs from the ceiling and it basically rotates. And it's got the angular displacement. And for translation, we got a current or mass m. <clears throat> basically or, uh, vertically, vertically or horizontally basically uh, moving. That's called a translation. So let's go back to the for a rigid body in rotation. We take the sum of moments. Oh yeah. Sum of moments. So sigma m of t is basically j, that's polar inertia, times the angular acceleration, and that would be your that will be your equation basically. So we got that out of the way now. So let's move on to the actual lecture. Okay, so <clears throat> let's change colors here. Let's go to actually let's go to blue. Okay, so you've got a mass that's hanging from a ceiling connected to a spring by a spring. And the, the, only, <clears throat> the only way this mass can move is up or down. So, right? So if I take the, if I pull on the mass and pull it down and I release it, it'll start vibrating up and down basically. So up and down. So, how do we analyze uh, this type of system for the equation of motion? So what we're going to do is, <clears throat> basically, what is this length here? What is this length here? Let's change colors. What is this length here? This length here is basically the stretched length. You know, we've talked about this in a previous video. The reason why this is... The uh, this is called the stretched length is because obviously there's way the weight because the weight of the the mass is pulling down and it bounce, balances out the uh, the force with the spring so the first step here before we actually do the sum of forces or we do the uh, you know the Newton's second law we, we we just go back to basics we do static equilibrium So let's first step is well, let's do the FBD diagram. That's your first step when you do when you do any any equilibrium static equilibrium problem. So let's draw the that's the mass and you've got the weight pulling down and then you've got the spring force uh, 
Basically, the spring force is called the restoring force. So the restoring force it basically restores the object, the mass, back to its uh, original position. So let's do some forces in the y direction, and we'll consider up being positive equal to zero. And now we've got Fs minus the weight equals zero. So Fs is equal to the weight, which is equal to K displacement, right? Or Kx. Let's, we're not going to use X here. You'll know why in a second. We're just going to use K uh, displacement, okay? So now, <clears throat> So the force of gravity pulls, it's pulling down. So, so this is at rest. You have to know that this is at rest, right? So rest, there's no motion, there's nothing. It's just called static equilibrium. So now we know that the weight is equal to K displacement. And that's what we want now. Now let's move on and do the second law of motion. Use a different color. We'll go back to blue. So, second law of motion. Sigma forces is equal to MA. <clears throat> That's your mass. Moving. That's it. So, so if we let the mass deflect, so basically pull on the mass a a distance of x. From its, uh, from its equilibrium position. So what we're going to have, so the FS spring is going to equal to X plus the displacement, right? So now when we do the sum of forces, MX double dot is equal to, we got the weight, of course. So in this, so this is a positive, so downward would be positive. So the spring, that's your Fs, so it's going to be negative Fs plus the weight, which is acting down. So M X double dot, negative K, that's your K, X plus displacement plus bracket and then plus the weight. Re -re, so basically um, let's let's bring in the k into the equation plus k plus x negative k to plus the weight. Now now this is the tricky part. <clears throat> what did we agree? Did, what did we do in the step step one here? We, we actually found that the weight is equal to K spring constant times the displacement. So we go back, we take that value, and, and we throw it in here. So let me put it up here. So previously, from static equilibrium, we know that the weight is equal to K delta that's T, that's the displacement. And now, once we sub that in here, minus K, let's, oh, oh dear. Let's go back to blue. And I'm trying to be consistent here with the colors, whatnot. So that's gonna be minus KX. Let's get minus W plus W, which is a weight. And that's gonna cancel out. So right there, you've got the 
equation of motion. And we've actually done this before, and it's similar to the, it's basically similar to the equation um, for the system that's on a cart. So you see that the weight doesn't really affect the natural frequency. So gravity, basically, the conclusion of this, um, conclusion, gravity does not affect your natural frequency. So now when we, so we have that, we've got that equation there. So mx plus kx equals to zero. So then divide by, uh, divide through m, divide by through m, uh, divide by m all the way through. And then you've got your angular frequency, which is exactly the same as for the system, linear system, which is this here. And there you go. Thanks for watching.